I asked her who did this to you, but she never replied. So you tried to find out who the culprit was. He who asks a question is a fool for a minute. He who does not, not remains a fool forever. Having been labeled a criminal twice during my time in Great Britain, I was quick to make up my mind. Better be a fool for a minute than remain a fool in prison forever. However, you've indicated that the victim failed to respond, is that correct? I know why. I know why the Englishwoman said nothing. She was ignoring me because of my stoop. And my mustache, because I'm Japanese. Oh dear, Sozaki-san really has developed a dislike for the English, it seems. Having read the report on his time in Great Britain, I can't say I'm surprised at his xenophobia. But the Englishwoman didn't ignore you at all. Did she, Mr. Reiterman? Hmm? Well, yes, alright. She did respond in a manner of speaking, I suppose. What do you mean in a manner of speaking? She just lifted a trembling finger and pointed in the direction of the defendant. Oh, Fucking press! Miss Moret pointed a finger at the defendant. So, Zeki-san, is that really true? It's not easy to stand here and say this, but... When we first entered the beach hut... The English woman was sprawled on the floor before us, the student girl standing on the far side of her. And when I asked who did this to you... The English woman summoned her last ounce of strength to point a trembling finger at the back of the hut. Which was, and it can't be denied, in the direction of the student girl who stands accused today. No. So, Zeki-san, why on earth did you ne neglect to mention this in your original testimony? But, 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 fiddlesticks, I say. This is not a British court of law. You will respond in Japanese. Yes, of course. The English woman did point her finger toward the back of the hut. But I was trembling, and she was trembling, and everything was a blur. And thinking about it, I feel as though perhaps she was pointing in a slightly different direction. Actually, no, not slightly, in a very different direction to where the student girl was standing. To somewhere at the back of the hut where nobody was standing at all. You mean that your memory of events and the direction in which the victim was pointing are both unclear? Yes, that's it. Unclear. Very, very unclear. Your Excellency, surely this proves the matter beyond all reasonable doubt. Yes, the woman may barely have been conscious, and yes, perhaps her finger wavered slightly. But there can be no doubt that this was an attempt by the victim to confirm the identity of her assailant. Why? Because if the court can see, there was no other... And then the accused in the direction the victim was pointing. It is now abundantly clear that no one besides the accused could possibly have committed this crime. I am inclined to agree. In the absence of an incredible argument to the contrary, I believe we can conclude this trial. Fuck off! Uh, how do I contradict this shit? No, no. <laughs> uh, the headline's writing itself. Dashing Lawyer's Hope stats, 92 points across the whole page. We'll do an extra edition. This is a serious blow, Suzato. Unless we're able to identify the true culprit and substantiate our claim with evidence, the judge will give his ruling and the trial will be over. But, but that's impossible, Father. We don't even know how the crime was committed yet. Impossible though the task may seem, we have no choice. We must think back over everything we've learned thus far. Somewhere in this detail, I'm confident we'll find the clue we need. Why give us our account of the events unfolded hold in the defendant's antechamber before the trial resumed? She told us what happened the precise moment Miss Brett was killed. The English woman was sitting at the back of the hut, listening to what I was saying. And then a moment later, she suddenly got to her feet before collapsing on the floor in front of me with a knife in her back. 
Aka and Miss Barrette had been stabbed in the back in a beach hut that was empty but for herself and Ray. Somewhere amid the information we gather so far, there must be an answer to that question. I take it that the defense has nothing further to add. So the gallant yokel student's luck finally runs out. I can't say I'm surprised. In that case, I am ready to deliver my final verdict on this matter. This is a crucial turning point now. If I can't establish what really happened, it's over. Where was the real culprit hiding, and how did he or she stab the victim? Oh, we're gonna... Like, I'm 90% sure it's there. Like, there's the answer. That is how they stabbed. They did it through the back of the hut, that giant crack. And I'm also going to save, just in case things go to shit. <laughs> Your Excellency, I respectfully ask you to postpone your adjudication for the time being. Oh, to what end, Counsel? The defense would like to present the court with an alternative theory. An alternative theory that can explain who the victim was actually trying to implicate with her dying gesture. An alternative theory? Huh, none exists! There was someone else present at the scene, who could have committed this crime. What? And the victim, Miss Barrett, tried to reveal who it was to those around her at the time, by muttering all her remaining strength and pointing a trembling victor finger in the killer's direction. This, this is fiction, fantasy. Very well, as you seem to be so sure of yourself, Counsel, I am prepared to hear your alternative theory. So, young Ryutaro Naruhodo, yes, Your Excellency, you will present your latest theory to the court by means of this plan. At the moment the victim was stabbed, where exactly are you proposing the culprit was concealed? Naruhodo-san would never give up, and I'm Naruhodo now. The true culprit, who fatally stabbed Miss Barrett, was concealed in this location here. Are you mad, Counsel? You're suggesting the culprit was outside the hut. Order, order, order. But student learn Naruhodo Esquire son. Naruhodo san Esquire, that makes no sense at all. You you've just pointed out the exact spot where I was hiding to get my scoop snapped. But I have seen a this suspicious individuals loitering about. I can swear to that. You are the suspicious individual. Obviously, if the culprit had been outside the hut, there is no way he, he or she could have stabbed the victim who was inside the hut. Actually, Prospector Ouchie, there is a way. Hmm? And in point of fact, the defense can provide evidence strongly suggesting that this is precisely the way Miss Barrett was killed. You're bluffing. You're, you're bluffing, you yokel. The defense assertion is clearly too fantastical for the court to comprehend. You will need to give us more guidance, counsel. One piece of evidence corroborates your theory that the victim was stabbed from outside the hut. I'm gonna go with... This one. The original photographic print of the crime scene. Yes, it's clearly visible in the print. The trace of the fatal thrust that they delivered from the outside the beach hut. Do, do you take us for fools? There is no hint of such thing. I'm not so sure everyone present would agree. Someone at least appears to have noticed what it is that I'm referring to. Counsel, once again, I must call on you to be explicit the court. Where in this photographic trace of the stabbing you claim took place from outside the hut? Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> this crack. Look 
closely just here. Oh, even there's blood splatter on the back, it almost looks like. Maybe not intentionally, but and it's hard to tell what the being gray and white. But it also looks like there's staining on the hut. In the scene in the back of the hut, you can see effects of a blade having been forced through the reeds. No, it can't. I can't see any such thing. It's true that the hut in question had four walls as you'd, you'd expect. However, by the part of the reeds, a knife blade could easily penetrate them. This is extraordinary. Yes. The true culprit actually stabbed the victim from outside the beach hut. Ah. And of everyone present at the scene, there is only one person who could have done that. The only one person who was directly outside the hut when Miss Brett was killed. Right and many Mimason. It could only have been you. He was also she was holding the pen that was also seen as a sign of incriminating Ray. Could have been a sign of incriminating this fuck. You say now? This is preposterous. This idea leaves me almost speechless. Just look at the photograph again. The victim lies almost exactly in the center of the beach hut, does she not? Are we to assume as part of the farcical scenario that the assailant was a knife thrower? No, of course not. Or not? If you recall the testimony of the defendant about the events of what, just before the victim's death. Inside the beach hut, I confronted Miss Barrett. But she sat on a stool at the back of the hut, smiling sweetly at me as if she knew she was untouchable. A stool. Have another look at the photograph. The slit in the reed screen. Would align perfectly with the back of a person, person who was sitting on that stool. My word. So in fact, the victim was killed while sitting on that stool by a stab wound to her back delivered through the reed screen. Ha! Huh. Having been attacked, Miss Barrett rose to her feet instinctively, but then unable to speak, she collapsed to the floor in the middle of the hut. Before the defendant. M.M. Bombi son's appalled eyes. And that, Your Excellency, is the truth of what happened on that beach that day. By your silence, meaning Memo son, I take it that you don't deny the charge. This. this is. absurd. Or at least, it's reasonable doubt. That will do. It would appear that we have a tacit admission of guilt from the witness. Accordingly, the court has successfully established the truth of this matter, which means the defendant, mbambi san is innocent of the crime. Oh, thank goodness. Wait, is this actually it? I finally made him cave. I must say, I've never been more proud. No, this can't be. The Algae Clan can't. What of my growth? My growth of hope? It was all an apparition. I can't accept this. I won't. I see no reason for the continuance of this trial. I will therefore move to conclude the proceedings by delivering my final verdict. He didn't actually admit guilt. Well, this is all very convenient. This is how the highest court in our mighty empire delivers justice, is it? Suppressing well-meaning citizens' freedoms to speak and banning them as criminals? You had a chance to speak if you were silent! <laughs> but!
But we've established that the victim was stabbed from the outside of the hut through the reed screen walls. And no one but you was in place in time to have his hand on the hilt of the blade. It's a perfect logical deduction. So, your argument hinges on the location of whoever stabbed the Englishwoman, does it? Well, it seems a little irrelevant now. Irrelevant? Where she was stabbed, how she was stabbed. It doesn't matter. I mean, whether she was stabbed at all makes no difference if you think about it. After all, this trial's already shown that the whole thing hinges on something else. Yeah, she was poisoned. What? What are you talking about? Brace yourselves, little man. I'm talking about the fact that everything's changed. Because of the dirt you dug up. What? Enough obscurity. Explain yourself, witness. What's to explain? I'm talking about the poison, of course. The poison. Let's ask the professor for a comment on the situation, shall we? I understand that the deadly poison you were developing was stolen from your laboratory, correct? And it's been shown that this poison was administered to the victim, Miss Barrett, is that right? That is correct. The unusual contrition of the victim's pupils are a sure sign of this particular poison was used. I see, I see. So, presumably that means that the victim already had the poison in her body before she was stabbed. Huh. Given that her pupils were clearly constricted, it seems highly likely, yes. If she had been dead already, the poison could not have circulated in her blood. I mean, the stabbing itself didn't kill her immediately either. So it would have had time for the poison to circulate had it been on the knife, but they're also saying it's not been on the knife, so... Ah, <sighs> my brain is more complicated than I thought it was. Ah, uh, how refreshing to hear the argument of a metropolitan mind. Precisely, it matters not on a jot who stabbed whom in whose back and with whose blade. I'm sorry, if a reporter stabbed someone in the back for no reason, or hey, they're dead anyway, that still leaves some questions. Because, quite simply, the English woman's life was taken not by the knife, but by the poison. You didn't even believe in the poison, ouchie. You thought the poison was bullshit earlier. But, but that can be explained by the poison being on the blade, as I already... Yeah, and we that already got proven wrong. We got already, have you, Yokel? During the very proceedings, the laboratory of the professor at your side assisted in proving. That the blade of the weapon used to attack the victim had no trace of poison on it whatsoever. <sighs> so let me get this down. The facts, as skillfully established by the defense in this trial, turn out to be the headline making red herring. Is that about right? <sighs> um, well. Ugh. God damn it. Order, order, order. But where does this leave us? How in the at case did the poison enter the victim's body? There is an undeniable obvious answer to that. The lady most likely imbibed it? Uh I am going to Google words right now. Im Oh, embedded? Okay, so she drank it? You mean she drank it? Okay, I can just hit continue. Have another look at the photograph here, as you can see. 
A bottle of carbonated water and under a glass has been knocked onto the sandy floor of the beach hut. The poison could have been slipped into either. So somebody made Miss Britt drink it? Well, what do you know? Look at those dashing eyes. This'll make great front page shot. Hey, why the bewitching stare? After all, I'm the last person you should be looking at. It would make so sense that I poisoned the woman, would it? I mean, that's been established already. Hold it. Established? What are you talking about? Hmm? Don't tell me you've forgotten. That's a little hard to believe, given that the person who's established it was you. Me? What on earth does he mean? Oh, let me capture those wide eyes. The prime press fodder this is. It would seem this trial is not destined to end yet, after all. I hereby call upon the witness to further testimony. That's great, that is. Let me get a shot of this magnificent beard, Your Excellency. You claim it to be impossible that you were the one responsible for administering the poison to the victim. You will explain to the court in your testimony that the basis of which you make such a claim. I'm a journo, and I'm a man. I've never tried to run or hide from anything in my life. And I'm not about to start now, because that's meany memoism. <sighs> Weren't you lying about something else earlier about having spoken to the victim? Come on, your meany memoism, crap full of shit. For a brief moment, I thought I'd eliminated the truth, but it slipped right through the obscurity into obscure it obscurity again. Just where is this trial going to take us? Oh god, there's complete innocence. Oh yes, I stabbed the English woman. And it's that very fact that proves I'm innocent. You Okay. Whew. That that's okay. Why though? <laughs> like for real? Why stab her? <laughs> because why would would I have bothered to stab a woman if I'd already poisoned her? When I heard the student girl on that pompous English murder or arguing, it got my goat. If the courts were going to punish, were going to punish Brett for what she did, somebody else would have to see just a stun. That's a very casual admission to stabbing someone. So you admit it then, that everything happened as I described. That you're the one who stabbed Miss Brett in the back through the read screens. You can blame this miserable country, country of ours. A country that bows to the pressure of foreign powers and lets murderers walk free. What kind of future can a country like that have? That's why I did it. I did what our pathetic leaders didn't have the guts to do. Slap bang in the middle of the charming lady's back, I plunged the blade of sweet justice right in there. Can we lock his ass up? Someone casually admitting to stabbing someone should not be allowed to walk free either. As someone who spends his life seeing that the truth is told, I feel really, really awful about giving false information in my testimony before. But as it turns out, there was somebody else who had it in for the victim and got to her before me. That's right, you guessed it. That pretty little student girl. Now there is a woman after my own heart. You're implicating Ray again. She's the one who gave the poison to the English woman and ended her pitiful existence. And suddenly, snap, this journal here is off the hook. Hmm, the argument is sound, clearly. If the witness had administered the poison himself, he need only to avoid it for it to take effect. Subsequently, stabbing the victim in the back would have been entirely nonsensical. And therefore, the reporter had nothing to do with the poisoning. Yes, it's all quite logical. 
he's very calm to the admission of dude stabbed a woman. And I'm gonna say this, he probably didn't know she was poisoned when it happened. <gasps> so that still is attempted murder. That's right, it is logical and true. I'm glad you've all seen the light. Just this at last. This is unbelievable. And after I made so much pro progress in proving his guilt, is he gonna get away with it now? Think of Kazuma-san, Ama, and Naruhodo-san. They never stopped looking for a way forward until the judge's final gavel. Very well then, counsel. Proceed with what I assume to be your final cross-examination in this trial. I thought the last one was the last one. <laughs> yes, Your Excellency. Oh yes, establishing the English woman is the very fact that proves I'm innocent. Because why would I have bothered to stab the woman if I had already poisoned her? When I hear the student girl and the pomish English woman arguing, it got my goat. If the courts weren't going to punish Miss Bright for what she did, someone else would have to do the just see the just done. I might have to press I think I need to press on everything. So you do admit that you had murderous intentions toward Miss Barrett then? Ah! The woman's very existence offended in my sense of justice. Your sense of he's claiming to be some sort of sort of righteous indignation. She was pure evil, a cold-blooded killer who committed murder right here on the Empire soil. But did our good-for-nothing government do anything? Not a chance, so I had to step in. Fly the flag of justice, put things right for the people. Yes, it was my civic duty. That's what drove me to do it. So in summary, murderous intentions then. Whatever you want to call it, the point is this. That English woman was a blight. So I had to do what was right for society. Yet a real wrong was done by the student girl in the dock, a crime for which she must pay. Ooh. <sighs> I'm going to say this right now. Murderous intentions and actually stabbing someone, I'm going to say 99% sure. Did not know she was already poisoned. <gasps> Still means he's not... He's not in the clear just because she didn't happen to die from it. Assault with a deadly weapon. Honestly, because the poison was nothing to do with me at all. Because why would I have bothered to stab the woman if I had already poisoned her? So you still maintain that you didn't give the poison to the victim. Obviously. That may be like putting a belt on your trousers when you're already wearing braces like these. The accused administered the poison following which the victim stabbed the, vic the witness stabbed the victim. An unforgivable act certainly, but not one of murder. It kind of was though! That victim rests on the accused's shoulders. Or that crime rests on the accused's shoulders. This is how the law works, you see, Yokel. Who knows? You may even learn something here today. I learned it's fucked up. <laughs> Two people having murderous intentions toward the same person and both acting on them. Not saying that Ray did it, but either way. Two people, one poisoning, one stabbing, on their own, doesn't make one better or worse just because one of their methods killed first. Two consecutive attempts on her life in the span uh, it's of minutes. Quite a day for the victim. Do something that evil and you've got it coming. That's how the law works. The law of reckoning. That's not the kind of law the court upholds. You will reiterate why you were compelled to stab the victim then, witness. When I heard the student girl and that pompous English woman arguing, it got my goat. Hold it. What were they arguing about? What exactly were they arguing about? About what happened in that restaurant nine months ago, that's what. 
the student girl was laying into the English woman for killing her beloved mentor, Dr. Wilson. Yes, John H. Wilson, a professor of medicine, invited here from England by the Professor Mikotoba, no less. Right, but the English woman was cheered. Her case was to be heard by the British Consular Court in Shanghai. However, there is little doubt that she simply would have been acquitted and sent back to her homeland a free woman. Don't smile at that ouchie. He was eating that student girl up inside. You could see it. I really felt for her. Thank you, Ray. I I can't. I can't stand here and listen to this tripe. Ray, young girl, you stand accused here. You can't just blurt out whatever you feel like. No, you can't. Sorry, but I'm in the middle of some very important testimony here. Just keep quiet and listen. But, but this awful man is making all of this up. Suzato, please, you have to make them listen. Return to the dock at once, Mimbabi-san. We're in the middle of a cross-examination. Your Excellency, please, I implore you. That journalist is clearly not a trustworthy witness. Exactly. He's a filthy, rotten, bat I carded bigoted, dirty, great peeping Tom. Whoa, take it easy there. Please, I, I really think the court should have to hear what the defendant has to say. Your Excellency, I see no need whatsoever to entertain the accused's remarks. You have a dude who admits to stabbing the victim. Getting to basically point the finger at the person who accused of poisoning the victim. I will grant the request of the defense. <sighs> but, but, your excellency. This is likely to be the final cross-examination of these proceedings. As such, I believe it would be ill-advised to stifle the defendant's obvious concerns. So, whilst recognizing that the con- uh, Travis- Contravenes regular protocol, I hereby call the defendant to speak. Oh. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Thank you, Ray. It was nothing to do with Dr. Wilson's. We were discussing the stolen poison. Let's hear about more of that, then. The stolen poison that killed the victim, you mean. I suspected her being the one to steal it. I mean, just think about how she killed Dr. Wilson. That's true. Additionally, Miss Barrett certainly had knowledge of the new poison. But surely it would have been no easy task to steal a highly secret toxin being developed for the government. Indeed, all visitors to the laboratory are thoroughly searched when they leave. Even if a thief managed to avoid being seen by myself or a colleague, getting the poison out would be very difficult. She has a bird on her head. Did you search the bird? That's true. I pestered Professor Mikotobo until he agreed to show me the poison while I visited his laboratory. But as I left, I was searched from top to tail. Miss Barrett rather bluntly revealed the existence of the toxin we'd been developing, you see. And since Sozeki-san expressed such an interest in it, I felt unable to refuse. Obviously, I gave nothing away other than the fact that it was an extremely potent substance. I'm very ashamed of myself. It's just that I've had a s singularly terrible experience with the deadly poison. I wanted to look my old enemy in the eye. Surely you can understand that. To find out my suspicions were true, I confronted Miss Barrett about the poison. I told her if there were to be an incident involving it somehow, it wouldn't just be the university. The military would be dragged into it. The whole government, even. It would be a complete disaster. And how did Miss Barrett respond to your concerns? She just curled those beautiful lips of her and said she didn't know the first thing about it. In English, actually. Ah, yes. Mini Mama san one small question, if you don't mind. I do mind. Can't you see I'm busy? Clearly, you were outside the beach hut listening whilst the defendant and Miss Barrett were conversing. Presumably, then, it was you who wrote this article about what you heard. Exclusive Deadly Poison Stolen from Yuma University Medical Research Laboratory. The story was published in the morning edition of Shoyu News. 
The details are too accurate to for it to have been written by anyone else. Hmm? Sorry. Don't know what you're talking about. Yes, look at this. The entire article. It's almost what I said to Miss Barrett, word for word. N well, Meanie Mammelson. As a journal, and as a citizen of a free country, I don't have to reveal my sources. That's the founding principle of Meanie Mammalism. Mother's well, clearly right about this. That reporter did write that article. And he based it on what he overheard from outside the hut. So that's what it was all about. You were trying to cover up the fact that you were listening in? That's why you came up with that stinking story about me arguing with her? Sh shut up! My stories never stink. Look, we... Whatever you say, little girl, it doesn't alter the facts. Your Excellency, there is something I want to say, and I want it to go on record. Very well, you may amend your formal testimony. Ha. Huh. The point is, if you'd poison someone, there'd be no reason to go and stab the person as well. Perhaps you doubted the efficiency of the poison. So have to make sure your victim would die. That's horse dung. What? That would be like pouring pepper on your Chinese rum before you even taste it. Completely reckless. Although, it might surprise you to learn that I am a bit of an impetuous pepper pourer as it happens. Once the victim had taken the poison, she would have been only minutes away from death. And yet, yeah, this man then proceeded to stab her in the back as well. There have to have been a good reason for that. It was if the reporter who gave the poison... If it was the reporter who gave the poison Miss Barrett, then clearly he must have done it prior to Ray entering the hut. Yes, that's undeniable. But between him leaving the hut and the victim being stabbed, there was one very crucial change in the situation. The reporter overheard the conversation between Ray and the Englishwoman. That's when Minnie Mousson first found out about the exact nature of the poison he'd used. That could be the key here. If the victim had unwittingly taken the poison already, the reporter would have no reason to stab her. On the face of it, the logic sounds entirely reasonable. But there's no question that this man was responsible for Miss Brett's murder. If we could think of a plausible explanation as to why he might have stabbed her even after the poisoning, I feel sure that there everything would drop into place, and that's what we should be looking for. In order to do that, I must try to glean more information. Oh yes, I stabbed the Englishwoman. It's a very fact that proves I'm innocent. Curious. Poison article. Deadly poison being developed in secret. Even the smallest amount entering the body via the mouth or via wound poison lays blood. Proof fatal in minutes. Current methods cannot detect new. Mercy would have been. Entering the body via the mouth or via a wound. Okay, so this one's not quite the sink. Because the one used in Dr. Wilson's murder required it to be of a wound. So if you just ingested it, no issues. Whereas this one, if you ingest it or if it were to enter the bloodstream would be fatal. Nothing appears obviously out of the ordinary here, does it? Uh, 
Okay, that's just a German conversation. I don't know if there's anything else related to the pen. Doesn't seem to be. Because why would I bother to stab the woman if I had already poisoned her? I heard the situation the girl in the pub was got my coat. What is it, if you poison someone, there's no reason to then go and stab the person as well. <sighs> no trace of poison found on the blade. Land on the beach hut. Reported to me, it seems an intent to cover up this play this extraordinary. On the lecture, by uh, come to light, is there a deadly person may see developed? Remus, technically developed chemical university, could it would have been consulted. Onset of the current minutes, just 